Coach, it was senior night tonight. Can you highlight and recognize the seniors that are on the team here and tell us something about them, okay? Sure, yeah, we'll go through. we got eight of them, uh, eight of them, and uh, just we any season goes by the way of the seniors, you know, and, and these guys coming up throughout the ranks haven't had a ton of success, you know, in like seventh grade, eighth grade, and travel team and everything, And but they always kind of like playing uh, basketball and being in the gym, and so for them to come out uh, this year and have some success has been really good. Yeah, we got Darren Houston. Awesome to see him get the start tonight. He's just one of those guys who uh, loves being around the team, loves being around the guys, and um, and it's kind of fun having him uh, have him around. And then getting a senior night, we tried to get him a couple shots today, um, but uh, but it didn't happen. So it was it was great to get him in there. Uh, Gore, we've talked about so much. Uh, he's he's kind of the pulse of our team, and we do so much through him. And he had a, he had a really nice uh, really nice night tonight. Uh, Devin Orbeck just does all the things that you want on a basketball floor, um, and he's just he's a guy that's really really difficult to take off the floor. Uh, he just does so many little things, little tip balls um, and being unselfish and, 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 a, and a, a guy that really looks to get others involved and so he doesn't care about his points um, and he still impacts the game. Um, Fernando Estrella is just you know kind of one of our team leaders and doing all the dirty work and setting screens and offensive rebounding and probably the most well-liked guy on the team uh, and he brings a lot of energy in practice every single day. You can ask some of the guys about the screens he sets every day and he just elevates everybody's uh, everybody's play. Javi Ramirez, really good athlete and he's really come into his own as a basketball player and for the minutes today that he was on, he was on Drager number 21, an excellent shooter and uh, he couldn't shake him. Uh, Drager couldn't, sh couldn't shake uh, Javi and so he really used his athleticism well. Uh, Ian Funk has really come into his own this year, and he's got just great length at 6'5", and he had some nice offensive putbacks today. And you can't teach that length, and that just a tip passes and a block shot, and what uh, was great. And Hunter Goyle, we've talked about before, of just doing a lot of that little stuff, offensive rebounding, being physical. He's undersized in a lot of games, um, you know, but he shoots a very high percentage from the floor. And uh, Ethan Freeler, who's not not here tonight, um, is again one of those really really well liked guys who works hard every day, has a smile on his face, doesn't say too much, but uh, they're always you know chanting his name uh, with that. And so you know, in anything that we do, it's always Freeler, Freeler, Freeler. And so when we have guys on the bench that don't play, that are amongst the most well liked guys on the team, uh, it, it goes a long way. Well, you know that's the thing, and I know you always preach that too, is you have to know your role, understand it, and accept it too. I remember one time I had a short talk with uh, Fernando, and he says, yeah, you know, maybe it didn't work out for me to start, but I know what I have to do, and I'll do it. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, we have a saying, be a star in your role. Whatever your role is, just be really, really good at that. That might be a, a like a person that shot, that counts down the shot clock. Ethan Freeler and Javi Ramirez, those guys are really, really good at that. So they're a star in that role. Might be a really good screener. Be a star in that role. And um, our guys have just bought into that. And I think part of it is that we know, they know, and the the past history has told us that there's a template for success. And it's worked in the past, and so people have bought into it. And it's it's not just lip service. It's not just coach speak. It actually matters, those little moments, those little tough things getting you through the season uh, to buy it, people buying into their roles. You know, just one more point, and every time I look at that banner with the state championship, there were so many guys on that team and so many seniors who didn't get to play, but you watch them on the bench, and they're just going crazy. Absolutely, and you can feel that. The people playing it can feel it. It just brings everybody's attention level and, and atmosphere up, and it, it's it's something that you that's kind of organic that just has to naturally happen. I mean, you can you can talk about it, and you can do those things, but really the guys have bought into it, and it's, I, I think our guys now, kind of as you mentioned that, our guys now have fed off the previous generation of players, and they saw that the people did it and they just pass on the seniors pass it on to the juniors who pass it on to the sophomores and now it's kind of a I don't know an expectation it's it's something we don't even talk that much about because it's just kind of natural for our guys I suppose in a, in a sense too if you're grumpy or something you're gonna have a teammate look at you and go what's wrong with you yeah you're gonna stick out <laughs> a little bit I mean yeah. you just you, you you just will you know, we try to balance that with knowing that they're competitors and knowing that they want to play and knowing that they, it's not like they're enjoying being out and, and not playing, um, but yet understanding that there is a process that goes to it. We can only play so many guys, but everybody provides value. Here's the thing that I've been thinking about after watching, uh, say, last night down at Minnewaska. 
Connor Anderson had that stroke going, and here he came out again today. And I'm not picking on him. I'm just saying a shooter overall. What goes through their head to where, you know, you make a couple and you feel good, you're going to shoot again. Yeah. But it's, it's more, though, I'm saying when you miss a couple, then you kind of shut it down. What goes on there? That, that's, the, that's the tough part about being a shooter is that you've got to be able to look at what well, we look at is shot preparation and shot selection. If those two things are good, if we're prepared for the shot, shot ready, and then uh, it's a good shot, then we'll live with the results. But humans are humans, right? It, it's, it's fun to see the ball be able to go in. And hopefully they just play long enough and trust their work and trust their training and preparation that it's going to come around. And if I miss two, I'm going to make the next two. Um, but sometimes I think the way it is with Connor Anderson right now is that the basket looks huge to him. You can just tell in that flick of the release is that – you know, you don't even really think about it. You just kind of get your feet set and you flick it and it goes in. Uh, and, and that's fun when uh, when you see players like that. And so, but you're right, though. It's If he mix, misses his next seven, we want him shooting the eighth. Mm -hmm. Because, well, a player like Ronnie Engelmeyer, he can miss two, but you know, shoot or shoot, right? Right. You know, if, if you're on, shoot. If you're off, shoot till you're on. I mean, that's kind of the men mentality um, that, that you got to have. And, and again, shot preparation, shot, shot selection, if they're good, we'll live with any results. Let's talk about and just touch on the uh, Section 6 AA because it's only about, a, what, a week and a half away here. What, what in your head right now is going on with the section? What do you think? Well, uh, several of the seeds are kind of already set, but there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of movement. And, you know, we, Section 6 has always been known, and we're really proud to having – just a really deep, deep uh, uh, section. And I think what separates our section more than other sections is uh, some of the first round games are, uh, are challenging, but the second round games, every single one of them is a grind. And I don't think there's a lot of sections in the state where a 1-8, 2-7, or whoever wins in the first round, 3-6 matchup are, some of them are, are coin flips uh, with that. And it's not just a 4-5 game. And so um, I think that's what makes it so fun. I think that's what makes Section 6 playoff basketball fun. And so, um, you know, definitely Albany is the number one and heads and shoulders above everybody else. You know, but Mora isn't that far behind them and they've, they've proven that before uh and then after that three through eight um you know it's kind of um not a huge difference i think three through eight well it's going to be a battle as always uh i have one more thing to say because i don't know the gentleman's name who played the uh, star spangled banner today yeah uh marty i think cypher i'm not sure his, i think it's the last name marty cypher he's done this a few times mm -hmm. and uh, it's phenomenal isn't he yeah oh. he's great it's just he hits it every time so it's we're lucky to have someone like that talented uh, in our community that's willing to do that. Well, then you've got Coach Keekley too. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, all of a sudden he busts out the vocals, and wow. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to follow up those acts in a talent show. <laughs> all right, just to go here, what about Friday night? Yeah, I mean, fun rivalry, right, and Sock and, and Melrose, and to have it, you know, it would – Looked at that at the beginning of the year and was like, well, is there any chance that could be for a conference championship and give Sox Center credit for already clinching it? Uh, so I think Kevin should just rest all of his players. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, Kevin. Um, no, we, it's a knockdown, drag out affair no matter what, and so we're, we're expecting that. And, you know, I've said this before, it's always fun to play a team a second time, right, especially after you lost by 13 the first time. Let's see where we're at and see how far we developed. And, and um, for us to play this late in the year against Sox Center is, is a little bit unusual. But a Friday night, Sox Center, Melrose, two good teams that know each other so well, uh, it should be a fun night.